In my video about the Percy Jackson movies, I've mentioned that I will start rereading the books as I watch the series, and we'll see if it turns into a video. It's actually a bit harder than I thought because I've been very busy lately, but thankfully, I was still able to do it. And while simultaneously watching and reading The Lightning Thief, I saw the differences between each medium, and you're probably curious too, so I'll get right into it. Hi, I'm Zidney. And here are the major differences between the Percy Jackson book and series. I've mentioned it before and I'm saying it again. The physical appearances of our characters are different from the books. I don't really have to emphasize this since this is what fans have been talking about even before the show began. But here's a quick comparison of what they look like in the books versus in the series. Even though I don't want to emphasize the physical attributes of each character, I believe their physical appearances weren't the only things that change. One major change is the relationship between characters. First, Sally and Gabe's relationship. I've already mentioned this in my video about my first thoughts on the trio, that I didn't love what they did with Sally and Gabe. In the series, Gabe is more obnoxious than cruel, and we see Sally talking back to Gabe. In the books, Gabe held more power against Sally. Percy was always trying to defend his mother against him, but that doesn't mean that Book Sally is weak. She actually demonstrates a different kind of strength, her sacrificial love for Percy. Next, Luke and Annabeth. In the books, Annabeth has a crush on Luke, while Luke sees Annabeth as his little sister. In the show, I guess Luke mentioned the little sister part, but they never really showed Annabeth's crush on Luke. She never blushed, and she was not nervous when she talked to him. Actually, they hardly talked at all. So I don't know if they removed the crush thing or I'm just dense. Third, Annabeth and Percy's relationship. I feel like the series is already hinting Percibet earlier than they did in the books, which I guess is fine, because maybe they want to make it clear that they're the end game. But I actually like it better if they focus on establishing their friendship first before hinting Percibet. Finally, with the flashbacks in the series, they managed to showcase and establish Percy and Sally's relationship better, which I really appreciate. Since we're only getting 8 40 minute episodes for the first season, it's natural that they're not going to present every detail from the book. So of course, they're going to skip some adventures and immediately go to more important events. One evidence is that instead of Percy getting kicked out of Yancey Academy at the end of the school year, he gets expelled immediately after the museum trip. But overall, the pacing feels off. I don't know if it's because of the 8th episode and 40 minute limit they imposed upon the first season, but I felt like everything was happening too fast and too slow at the same time. I can't really explain it, but I felt like the series was all over the place. So this is one thing I hope they get better at for the second season. There have been many versions of how Medusa turned into a horrible monster. One version is when Medusa and Poseidon were caught in Athena's temple, and since Athena couldn't really touch Poseidon, she turned Medusa into an ugly monster as her punishment. Another version describes Poseidon taking advantage of Medusa, and as a form of protection, Athena turned Medusa into the monster that she is. And in another version, Medusa was just born a Gorgon. So the book and the series use different versions of the myth. In the book, Rick clearly portrayed Medusa as the bad guy. I mean, technically, in both the book and the series, we see Medusa chasing after the trio, but her background story differs. In the book, she has a soft spot for Percy because of Poseidon, and seeing Annabeth's gray eyes reminded her of the goddess that turned her into a monster. In the series, Medusa felt that she was loved by Poseidon, but her feelings changed when Poseidon did nothing to stop Athena from punishing her. They made Medusa more sympathetic, as she didn't want to punish the kids for their parents' actions. But overall, I liked the book version better because it had more suspense. I loved the experience I had when the trio slowly realized that Auntie M was really Medusa. In the series, they already knew who she was. She even introduced herself, so the mystery was gone. And actually, I'll be talking more about this later. Like I said earlier, since the first season is only limited to 8 episodes, so of course they would not be able to showcase every detail in the book. With regards to the gang meeting Echidna, in the series, 
The trio all meet Echidna while they were still on the train. Then they just headed to the arch to find a safe place to hide from Echidna and the Chimera. In the book, Percy was the one who met her in the arch. The trio went to the arch because of Annabeth's love for architecture. Plus she wanted to go sightseeing because she hasn't gone out in years. And when there was no room for Percy to ride down the elevator with Annabeth and Grover, Percy was stuck on top of the arch where he had to fight Echidna and the Chimera on his own. It's funny how they were able to show how Percy landed from the arch to the Mississippi River. Because maybe when Rick had written the scene in the book, he didn't think that the arch and the river were so far apart from each other. So Percy somehow managed to land in the river. But in the series, the waters grabbed Percy into the river. Another major change that happened was when Eris purposely asked Grover to stay with him while Percy and Annabeth went to the Tunnel of Love on their own. In the book, the traps set by Hephaestus involved mechanical spiders and a live broadcast. In the series, a new trap was set. It was a golden chair that turned you gold when you sat on it, so there was really no escaping it. Also, Hephaestus appears in the series, while we don't really see him in the book. Why weren't there any zebras in the series? With the title, we take a zebra to Vegas. You'd expect that there would be zebras in the show. But more than the lack of zebras, we also never got to see Percy discovering that he could understand zebras, or any other horse barons for that matter. But what really changed was the Lotus Casino scene. In the book, the trio unknowingly entered a trap. They were just lured to the only cash, fun games, and excitement in the Lotus Casino until they realized that they've been there for five days. In the series, I'm sorry, but I just found the episode really boring. The trio already knew that the Lotus Casino was a trap, so they were really careful about it. But why would people get trapped in a boring place like that? I don't understand the appeal of the Lotus Hotel in the series. I guess they've set up some VRs, but overall, the book version sounded more fun and a believable trap for me. This was very surprising for a lot of fans because we weren't expecting this to happen. I didn't expect the trio to miss the deadline. But honestly, did it make a difference though? I get that because they missed the deadline, Zeus and Poseidon began to wage war, but they didn't really show it. In the end, Percy was still able to present himself before Zeus and return the Master Bolt. And even though Zeus didn't end the war even with his Master Bolt returned, Zeus called it off when Poseidon conceded. But again, did it really make a difference? They never really showed the effects of the war. Some storms here and there, but there were already storms when the bolt went missing. So what was the real purpose of missing the deadline? The gods felt short for me in the series. Zeus was not bad though, he was very scary. Lance did a great job as Zeus. May he rest in peace. Poseidon was not so bad either. I could see him as the sea god. I didn't expect Hephaestus to be there, so I don't really have anything to say. However, Eris, Hermes, and Hades lacked the godlike quality I was looking for. Hades wasn't intimidating at all. I really wish they kept Eris' fire eyes, though I have no idea how it's going to look. And then we have Hermes. I don't like him. I don't know if it's because Lin-Manuel's well known that I only see him as Lin-Manuel and not Hermes, but I wish they hired someone not known to play Hermes. But overall, I wish all the gods exhibited more authority and power. Only Mr. D was the perfect cast for me. And finally, what really made the series different from the books and made me like the book better was the element of mystery. My biggest complaint is that the mystery wasn't really there anymore. Before Percy went to Camp Half-Blood, his mother already told him that his father was a god. Though I still love Percy's reaction to this revelation. You fell in love with God? Like, like, like Jesus? When Percy was about to embark on the quest, Grover already told him that his mother is really alive. When the trio met Auntie M, they already knew that she was Medusa. When they were about to enter the Lotus Hotel, they already knew it was a trap. They also immediately recognized Krusty as Procrotus. The excitement and mystery weren't there anymore. I actually appreciated the scene when the gang slowly realized they were actually talking to Echidna. In the book, the trio were constantly learning the true identities of the people they were talking to. 
This nice old lady giving them food was actually Medusa. This hotshot riding a motorbike is actually Eris. This fun arcade dreamland is actually a trap. This waterbed salesman was actually Procrutus. Procrutus? How do you pronounce his name? I don't know. The book gave us suspense, mystery, and excitement, while the series boringly just told us everything. And obviously, I like suspense, mystery, and excitement better. So those were the major differences between the book and the series. Overall, the first season of Percy Jackson is okay, I guess. I honestly don't love it as other people do, so I hope they do better in adapting the Sea of Monsters. Disney, maybe you could give them longer and more episodes per season? That would really help in the pacing. And maybe don't remove the element of surprise. Let the trio learn. They don't have to know everything. I want to feel the suspense, excitement, and mystery I felt when I read the books. Plus, maybe get better lights? Some scenes were really hard to see. Am I looking forward to the second season? If they're going to keep doing what they did with the first season with the weird pacing and the element of mystery gone, maybe not so much. But if this is a chance for them to do better, then yes. So I hope they do do better in adapting the Sea of Monsters. Hey guys, I didn't list down every change they did with the series because that would mean a very long video. I am honestly disappointed in the series and I expected more. I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for saying that, but I really wanted and tried really hard to like it. So I'm really hoping and praying that they would do much better next season. Please be better. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye!